Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today's topic is a serious issue that has been a concern for many people who visit hospitals or work in the healthcare industry, hospital-associated infections. Hospital-associated infections, also known as healthcare-associated infections, are infections that people acquire while receiving medical treatment in hospitals, clinics, or other healthcare facilities. These infections are caused by bacteria, viruses, or other pathogens that can spread from one patient to another or from healthcare workers to patients. Let's talk about the factors which contribute to the development and spreading of hospital-based infections. 1. Lack of hand hygiene. One of the leading causes of hospital-associated infections is the lack of hand hygiene among healthcare workers. 1. Healthcare workers who fail to wash their hands or use hand sanitizer before and after caring for patients can spread infections. 2. Contaminated equipment. Another factor that contributes to healthcare-associated infections is the use of contaminated medical equipment or devices. 2. If medical devices are not properly cleaned or sterilized between uses, they can spread infections. 3. Overuse of antibiotics. Overuse of antibiotics is another major factor that contributes to the development of hospital-associated infections. 3. Overuse of antibiotics can lead to the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria that can cause serious infections that are difficult to treat. 4. Inadequate cleaning. Inadequate cleaning of hospital rooms, medical equipment, and surfaces can also lead to the spread of infections. 4. If surfaces are not properly disinfected, bacteria and viruses can persist and infect patients. 5. Poor ventilation. Poor ventilation in hospital rooms can also contribute to the spread of infections. 5. If the air circulation system in a hospital is not properly maintained, airborne pathogens can circulate and infect patients. Routes of transmission of hospital infection. These hospital infections can be transmitted through various routes, and it's important to understand how they spread in order to prevent them. 1. Contact transmission. Contact transmission is the most common route of transmission in healthcare settings. 1. This occurs when a patient or healthcare worker touches a contaminated surface or object, such as a bed rail, door handle, or medical equipment, and then touches their face, mouth, or eyes. 2. Droplet transmission. Droplet transmission occurs when an infected person coughs or sneezes and spreads respiratory droplets containing pathogens in the air. 2. These droplets can travel up to 6 feet and infect others who are in close proximity. 3. Airborne transmission. Airborne transmission occurs when pathogens are spread through the air and can remain suspended for long periods of time. 3. This can occur when infectious agents are aerosolized during medical procedures, such as suctioning or intubation. 4. Vector-borne transmission. Vector-borne transmission occurs when a vector, such as a mosquito or tick, carries a pathogen from one person to another. 4. This is less common in healthcare settings but can occur in certain geographic regions or during certain seasons. 5. Foodborne transmission. Foodborne transmission occurs when contaminated food or water is consumed, leading to infection. 5. This can occur in hospital settings if food is not prepared or stored properly. 6. Inoculation transmission occurs when non-sterile syringes and needles used for injection purpose in the hospitals. How to prevent hospital infections? We will be discussing some effective strategies to prevent the spread of these hospital infections. 1. Hand hygiene. Proper hand hygiene is the most effective way to prevent the spread of infection in hospitals. 1. Healthcare workers must wash their hands frequently with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizers before and after caring for patients. 2. Proper use of personal protective equipment. Healthcare workers must wear appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves, gowns, and masks when caring for patients with infectious diseases. 2. PPE must be changed regularly and disposed of properly. 3. Proper cleaning and disinfection. Proper cleaning and disinfection of surfaces and equipment is essential to prevent the spread of infection. 3. Surfaces must be cleaned with appropriate disinfectants, and medical equipment must be sterilized before and after use. 4. Proper use of antibiotics. Antibiotics must be used judiciously to prevent the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. 4. Healthcare facilities must implement appropriate antibiotic stewardship programs to ensure that antibiotics are used only when necessary and that appropriate doses and durations are prescribed. 5. Vaccination. Vaccination is an effective way to prevent the spread of infectious diseases in hospitals. 5. Healthcare workers must be vaccinated against common infectious diseases such as influenza, hepatitis B, and measles, among others. 
Types of hospital infections and microorganisms associated with them. Hospital infections can be caused by a variety of microorganisms, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Here are some common types of hospital-associated infections and the microorganisms associated with them. 1. Urinary tract infections, UTIs. UTIs are the most common type of hospital-associated infection. 1. They are typically caused by bacteria, such as Escherichia coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. 2. Surgical site infections, SSIs. SSIs occur after surgery and are caused by a variety of microorganisms, including Staphylococcus aureus, Enterococcus faecalis, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. 3. Pneumonia. Pneumonia is an infection of the lungs and can be caused by bacteria, viruses, and fungi. 3. Common microorganisms associated with hospital-acquired pneumonia include Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Acinetobacter baumannii. 4. Bloodstream infections. Bloodstream infections occur when bacteria, viruses, or fungi enter the bloodstream. 4. Common microorganisms associated with these infections include Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, and Congida species. 5. Gastrointestinal infections. Gastrointestinal infections are caused by a variety of microorganisms, including norovirus, Clostridium difficile, and Salmonella. In conclusion, Hospital-associated infections can have serious consequences for patients, healthcare workers, and healthcare facilities. By understanding the factors that contribute to these infections, we can take steps to prevent them and protect the health of patients and healthcare workers. So, if you or a loved one are receiving medical treatment in a healthcare facility, it's important to be aware of the risks of healthcare-associated infections and to take steps to prevent them. That's it for today's video. We hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel at Dutch Draper for more informative videos like this one. Thank you.